Let's try out a possible new segment. I'm gonna go through entire houses in 2024 and see how I feel about them this year. Now this isn't gonna be comprehensive reviews or details, not that any of my videos are really any of that, but it's pretty much a super simple format. This is the fragrance from this house. How do I feel about it today? And I'll rank it from one to 10, simple. Now is that score gonna be consistent with my past opinions on the fragrance or in 2024, does it change? Which is a possibility, opinions do change. And in today's video, we're gonna start off with the House of Parfums de Marley. Let's roll my motherfucking music because I think I got like 15 fragrances that I got to get through. And let's see if in 2024, some still pop or some is dry. Listen, one of my beautiful peoples, you know who it is. It's your boy, c 3 u 3 b 3 Not gonna be a complex video. It might even be kind of quick. I don't know, I'm freestyling it completely. I didn't even take the fragrances off the shelf yet. I'm literally gonna just start picking at the fragrance, smell it a couple times, see how I feel about that opening slash midsection, and rate it from one to 10, how I feel today, 2024, which can potentially be a guide for some of y'all if you are on the fence of getting this fragrance and our nose is aligned. Maybe you wanna get your sample first. Maybe you wanna re-smell it to see if it's your type of vibe, or it just confirms that, nah, I wasn't trying to get that shit anyway. Let's go. First one is, Parfums de Marley Layton Exclusive. I already know how I feel about this fragrance. I recently featured it in a video and I'm still consistent even to this day in 2024 that I think it is a nice scent. It's just not a scent for me. I mean, let's be clear. I tried multiple times encompass the sexiness that other people feel in this fragrance and it just doesn't shine off of my skin. It has an unusual twist that just doesn't make me happy off the skin. So I've worn this a couple of days ago for some content and I already know where this fragrance lies for me. For me, it's a no, I wouldn't rebuy this fragrance personally. But as I stated, it's not that it's bad, it's just not my cup of tea and doesn't agree with my skin. So for me, I'm gonna put this in a space of like right now, uh, one hour later, uh, two hours later, uh, five, next one. Next one is Parfums de Marley. How tame. Similarities to Oud for Greatness, as multiple people have commented on that, and I absolutely see the essences and the pinpoints of that fragrance, but I still think it's an ultra handsome scent. Still sexy, comes off even a little bit chocolatey right now. Earthy, resinous, slightly spicy, herbaceous, and an incredibly wearable Oud. Right now, in smelling it upon this opening, I mean, it's a whole fucking vibe. With fall here, winter right around the corner, this is like a perfect option to wear, and I think a beautiful entry point into the oud space that you got to spend a little bit of coin on so for me right now today i'm gonna give this fragrance a solid 7.6 next one parfums de marley greenly one of the basic bitch in the pdm lineup but that smells really nice at least that i remember let's go ahead and re-smell the fragrance right now super crisp beautiful citruses green dewy ultra easy to wear not complex but does the scent profile match the price point nah subjective definitely wouldn't be at retail but it is super easy to to wear. It's got a mild fruitiness, a lot of citruses, a lot of green notes, a little bit of an autohitic energy with a mild like gingery spice essence. For me, this is more of a seasonal scent profile with signature scent possibilities. If you're somebody who really wants to wear more of a lighter green fragrance all year round, that's on you. I just don't think that this shit is really gonna shine, at least how I would like a fragrance to shine in the cold seasons. So for me, I would rate this joint a solid, uh, so much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. 6.9, next one. Woo, Carlisle on decky. This is gonna be a high fucking score. I love this scent for sure. I mean, it's going to smell gorgeous. I mean, I, I think the comparisons used to be like uh, hints of like Harrod and Aljuan or whatever, which is a fragrance I don't have in my collection. I absolutely need to get it. But this fragrance was for me jaw dropping, absolutely amazing. Never smelled anything like this before when I first got my nose on it. And it still holds an incredible place in my heart. This just speaks to cold weather to me. It's crisp, apple-y, green, slight lavender essences. This nutmeggy, dessertish type vanillic essence. Super sensual, resinous, deep, spice. It feels like it has black pepper essences because it kind of hits me in the top of the nasal cavity. I think that this is gorgeous. This for me is a bro, solid nine. I love this scent. I think it's really good. Next one. Percival by PDM. Dare I say PDM's like office safe signature scent in that space? 
comparatively speaking, been told to be in that platinum Chanel space, and I can kind of see the little bit of barbershop essence in the scent. Soapy shaving foam, classical mild fougere essence, a little bit of a sweet fruity factor mildly, counterbalancing itself with the citrus, but still keeping the versatility to be worn on a daily basis. A lot of people use this as their signature scent and absolutely love this scent. Other people may feel that it might be kind of basic -y, especially based on price point, because believe it or not, people equate price to scent. That's just kind of the way that it is. It's economy. Everybody's struggling in these streets. Hey there, little guy. I'm gonna give this to you and not your mommy. Cause she's gonna spend it on booze. But for me, I think it's a super easy to wear, ultra versatile, signature scent worthy. This is like the Aqua de Gio of parfums de Marley as far as versatility and office safe sexiness. So I'm gonna put this at like a 6.9. Next one. Now let's move over to PDM Sedley. The minty punch of the parfums de Marley lineup, their attempt to do something a little bit fresher, inviting, also really safe in the niche space. And they achieve that very handsome. Also not a wildly revolutionary scent. And it's very citrus and mint forward. It has a super refined, and classiness. I think that this is more for a mature individual who just lives his life away from the social media atmosphere. Maybe likes to live a subtle flex life, like still have a little bit of opulence in his day and wants to wear something of a beautiful luxurious element that costs a price point just to feel of a certain status, but doesn't want to get risky when it comes to the scent profile. And that's where this fragrance comes in. It's woody, it's minty, it's green, and it also encompasses kind of like that old mature dated money. You know, the Park Avenue vibe, sack of ponic. You know, real cash, bonds, when CDs were a thing. So for me, this is their take on a classical gentlemanly scent profile, reminiscent of the old designer aspects. But I don't think the youth is really gonna adapt to this joint. And in 2024, I would rate this like a 5.5. Five. Next one. PDM Persis or Perseus, who cares? Now, something about this fragrance is very interesting as it all followed the same DNA that was ultra popular during the summer. Multiple niche brands have this same pinpointed style DNA, which was prevalent. It was the whole vetiver, citrus, woody, cedar-ish kind of hype of 2024. I feel like it was a note passed around to all the fragrance brands in the niche space like, hey, 2024 summer consists of vetiver, citrus, woods, tart pomelo slash grapefruit energy. And they definitely got the memo. For a summer fragrance, incredible performance, amazing sillage, few freshy fragrances have summer performance. This one absolutely encompasses that, but you're gonna get a level of redundancy there that may bother some people, especially if they're in the niche space. But truth be told, the PDM hype is transcended down all the way to like the youth. Like I remember going to the PDM boutique and seeing young teenagers up in there in straight up like their Sunday's best clothing, buying 300 and something dollar fragrance. So it's not about the fragrance connoisseur space, it's about hype and how it reaches the masses and how they feel wearing these types of fragrances and if it boosts their confidence or they feel extra sexy wearing it. Which essentially is what fragrance is about. Yeah, price point is very important, but how does that shit make you feel? So regardless of how I feel about the scent, which in this case, I feel like it's the most popular DNA 2024 summertime vibes, that young high school kid who's spending his hard earned money mining crypto and having like seven figure salary will think this shit is absolutely lit and smells fantastic on him and he'll get high school bush. For me, I still stick to the space that the shit performed incredible. It was a very popular DNA that they absolutely nailed and it's a strong solid seven and a half for me. Next one. Next is PDM's Altair. This joint has been getting a lot of polarizing reaction. And it's an easy reason why. Not a lot of dudes rock vanilla or really can take vanilla. Like they just feel it leans too feminine. And I can completely understand that. I've always been somebody who's been into vanilla even when it comes to fucking ice cream. I like vanilla. Kind of boring, but it gotta be a good vanilla. It can't just be some basic shit. And if you throw a little almond essence, like a little vanilla with a chocolate almond, oh yeah, I'll do it. And this is definitely vanilla and musk. All the musks in the world incredibly potent, which could be a pro and a con for some people depending how they like that fragrance or depending who's around you. It's an unusual blend of spices with a very prominent vanillic and musk note. As a vanillic fan, I do appreciate this fragrance, even though sometimes it does come off a little bit green and medicinal, which might throw some people off with that scent profile. Some people may just want more vanillic and musky nuance and not so much that green medicinal aspect that this fragrance has, but it also produces body and I feel enhances the performance, at least off of my skin or just adds a 
little something that's slightly different, which is enjoyable for me. So for me, I think this fragrance is a very nice scent profile, and I'll give this joint like a 7.5. Next one. Layton, baby. Layton is in that Carlisle space. These are two fragrances that I can put side by side with each other, and they can interchange positions all the time. It's not a fragrance that I have to resmell. I think that this is just one of the signature flagship beasts of the Parfums de Marley lineup, and will forever be a love in my collection. This for me, easy nine. Again, interchangeable with Carlisle, every which way. Sexy, apples, fucking just encompasses. All I smell here is going out. That's, that for me, like this, I've worn this shit so much that for me it's just going out. This is what this fragrance encompasses to me. Sexy vibes, nobody's gonna be smelling like me. I'm gonna be killing the scene. I'm definitely gonna get a compliment from a dude, guy, they be, whatever the fucking case may be. I'm gonna get a compliment with this joint. I love Layton and it's just one of my babies. So yeah, nine, next one. PDMs, Nissian. Nobody talks about this shit. This one is up there with a fuck monster score. This is delicious. It's gritty, it's deep, it's oud, it's woody, it's mysterious. It's what you want in a winter fragrance. This shit is a sleeper, son. And this has got no love in the community. Everybody wants the hypey latents, you know what I'm saying? And I get it. But some of the nerds might want to dig into something a little bit more bolder, or you're just a person who likes something richer and more intense and full body. I think that this DNA kind of encompasses the first position of when Parfums de Marley came out before it started catering to the masses, which is what every business does, is try to get fucking people in the door. This is a fragrance that might not get people through the door because at the times that these fragrances are coming out, if you wasn't from the Middle East, you were like, yo, what are you doing, guy? Like, this shit is crazy. For me, this shit is crazy good. Yeah, I'm gonna easy give this joint like a 8-2. I think Nissian is a sleeper. It doesn't have much versatility, unfortunately. You know, it's bold, oody, woodiness with its really punchy, rustic denseness. It's not something that can be worn all year round, so it's very limited to cold weather. So if you don't live in a place with cold weather and you're not accustomed to wearing oud type fragrances that are very wood forward, then this shit just ain't gonna be for you, but I love it. Next one. Another monster score sleeper that gets zero love. Hadden by Parfums de Marley. Another winter monster. Might be a little higher than Nissium. Not gonna hold you. My only problem with Habden is I don't understand why people haven't put this shit in the same categories of a Leighton or a Carlisle or even a Leighton Exclusive. Like I'll wear this shit 500 times over Leighton Exclusive and Leighton Exclusive blows this shit out of the water as far as sales or whatever. Like is this discontinued and maybe I'm not aware of it? Because even when it was out, shit had no hype. But we're talking about a caramelic, sexy ass fragrance. Middle Eastern spices, rosy, woody, resinous, ambery, ultra sexy. I think this is gorgeous. This is like a 8889. I definitely feel that this fragrance should have gotten a lot more notoriety, at least based on my taste, and I think it definitely holds a position along the Carlisles and the Leightons of the world. So if you have an opportunity and this isn't discontinued, once again, I don't know, I don't keep track of all this shit because it doesn't interest me. What interests me is, is smells. Now who's releasing what and what day by what perfumer, that's not what interests me. I wanna know, hey, does it smell good, does it not? Let me translate that shit into a camera. So if this is still available and you're able to somehow get yourself a sample, try it out with your other Parfums de Marley fragrance, then we talk next one. Another OG in the Parfums de Marley space, I'm gonna butcher this name, Kuhuyan, Kuyan by Parfums de Marley. Another OG joint. This is, uh, this one from what I remember was a little rough, but let's see. I guess I remembered wrong. Okay, I'm not the biggest fan of heliotrope, so you're getting these white florals with heliotrope accents, which are, okay, it's not bad. It's giving it very powdery forward, slightly, slightly animalic when it comes to these fragrances. There's a little bit of a punchy funkete in this joint, almost smells like civet, and a little bit of a black licorice essence from this fragrance. This definitely is gonna have no mass appeal. This is not a fragrance that I reach for actually hardly ever, to be honest with you. It still has a lot of dynamic personality and it's very Middle Eastern catered in my opinion. So I could definitely see how people really won't take to this particular fragrance. I think it's handsome, sexy, and different in its own way, but that's also like saying, no, 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 I see the good in this person, and then you're looking at them externally and like, ugh, but I'm sure she has a good heart, ugh. Great story, compelling and rich. So for me, this fragrance is kind of like, ah, uh, five, next one. The red-headed stepchild of perfumes, the Marley, yeah, Kalan. 
when Kalan came out, I had people feeling some type of way. This spicy, spicy, peppery, grenade of a scent profile was extraordinarily polarizing and still is. It's a risky scent with incredible performance, but it is very spicy forward. So you just gotta be into the red and black pepper accents as this is what really spawns this fragrance. It's like saffron, red pepper, black pepper, all the fucking peppers that you can find in a pepper mill. With a tantalizing punch of musk to encompass that cloud of peppery goodness. Surprisingly, this fragrance smells really nice on my skin and I have gotten a couple of compliments from this joint but I still doesn't think it has a mass appeal quality it's not like in the spice bomb space that regardless even with all the peppery accents of it it has more of a mass appeal but personally I would wear this before I wear a spice bomb original I just don't like spice bomb original so with this again a ton of spices every spice that you can think of muskiness a little bit of a sour blood orange kind of essence and although risky still kind of intrigues me it has an addictive quality to it that I do enjoy so I'll give this one a hmm Six, eight, next one. We're coming down to the wire, folks, and this one is another one of the pillars of Parfums de Marley, Harrod, ladies and gentlemen, the tobacco beast that is known as Harrod. Delicious, incredible. I think it's fantastical. It has what you're looking for in a fragrance, the mass appeal, the sexiness, the tobacco essence. The whole wearable vibe, it's sweet, it's sexy, it's suede, it's leather, it's tobacco, it's spicy, inviting, super beautiful, and honestly, my scent of the fucking day. Damn, it's been a minute since I worn this shit. Ah. Wow! It's such a good scent. This definitely, I'm gonna have to put it in like eight, 8.8. .8. This is fucking delicious. Oh, love it. And finally, Pegasus Exclusif. If Garlan got together with like PDM and said, yo, let's do something almond on steroids with also heavy musk and chemical link components, that's what Pegasus exclusive would be. Ah, damn it, this shit is strong. The Siage cloud alone just barely prevents me to fucking put this shit near my nose. The cloud is insane. And I've sprayed some beast fragrances, but this motherfucker takes the cake. I feel like this has aged gracefully. It just progressively gets better, sexier, a little bit bolder. I thought Pegasus original was maybe a little bit better. That's how I felt originally. But I feel that this has aged gracefully. I don't know if it's with time, maceration. I, I truly don't know. It could be the whole maceration aspect, but it's aged incredibly. Like this is easy as seven, eight without even thinking about it. It's a little bit of a risky ballsy fragrance with a little bit of an almond extract experience and heavy musks. But yeah. Rock the shit out of this joint. And that's it, 15 Parfums de Marley fragrances that I currently have in my stash and how I feel about them today in 2024. That can potentially change as well, but that's how I feel right now. You let me know what your favorite PDM is in the comments below, because I love y'all mother suckers from my heart. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all bitches next time. You know what it is, biggest in the game. Smooches. For the rough, rugged, and raw way, this nigga Jay, it's a game, but he don't play. Hey. For all the chicks that got dead in the penthouse suite on top of my mom's crib. Hey. It's long since you never get in. It's long since that you would think that you would...